Big news. A critical White House executive order has just been released clearly outlining a timeline for a human landing on the moon and the construction of a permanent lunar base with the goal of staying ahead of China. So what role will SpaceX play in this effort? At the same time, progress at Starbase continues to accelerate, especially as preparations move forward for several major upcoming tests. Meanwhile, Ariane 6 has just launched, marking an important milestone for Europe's space program. Let's explore all of this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's becoming increasingly clear that controversy and skepticism surrounding the U.S. lunar program are intensifying as official mission schedules draw closer. This is especially true for Artemis 3, which is planned to mark humanity's first return to the lunar surface in more than 50 years. With expectations rising and timelines tightening, questions Questions about readiness, leadership, and long-term strategy are growing louder across both public and professional circles. That clarity arrived shortly after NASA officially confirmed its leadership, when the White House issued a new executive order titled Ensuring American Space Superiority. This order serves as a broad mandate for the U.S. aerospace industry and lays out a structured framework for what NASA and its partners must accomplish in the coming years. The executive order is extensive and detailed detailed, containing multiple subsections that outline responsibilities, priorities, and deadlines. Among these, two sections focused on the moon stand out as particularly important. These sections include explicit timelines and objectives which are formally listed in Section 2, Item A of the document. The first major directive states that the U.S. will return Americans to the moon by 2028 through the Artemis program. This wording is deliberate and significant. By explicitly naming the Artemis program, the executive order reinforces the existing roadmap rather than signaling a shift to an entirely new strategy. In doing so, it effectively quiets criticism from certain officials, including former NASA administrators, who have argued that Artemis is too complex or poorly structured and should be replaced with a different approach. However, the most important detail in this statement is not the program name, but the year. The target date is now 2028 rather than 2027, which NASA had previously announced earlier earlier this year. The single-year difference has far-reaching implications, both politically and technically. The announcement prompted a wide range of reactions, including a brief but notable response from Elon Musk, who simply commented, cool. At first glance, the response might seem casual, but it raises an important question. Why would the head of SpaceX react so positively to what appears to be a delay? More importantly, why is he so nonchalant? What's up with that? To understand this, it helps to look at the broader geopolitical and technical context. Even with a 2028 deadline, the U.S. would still be positioned ahead of China, which has publicly stated its intention to land humans on the moon by 2030. While it's impossible to know whether China could accelerate its schedule, the country has made steady progress this year on its launch vehicles, lunar lander designs, and crew spacecraft. That progress has kept international attention firmly focused on the timeline race. In this light, 2028 should be seen less as a fixed launch date and more as a firm deadline. In theory, missions could still occur earlier, possibly in late 2027, if technical readiness allows. The executive order sets a ceiling rather than a starting gun. Another important implication of this adjusted schedule is the opportunity it creates for SpaceX. Several reports and leaks suggest that SpaceX is targeting an uncrewed Starship HLS or Human Landing System mission to the moon in 2027, followed by a crewed landing in 2028. This plan has faced intense skepticism, particularly as figures such as Sean Duffy has suggested introducing internal competition for Artemis 3 roles. Such Proposals have fueled concerns that SpaceX could lose its central position in the mission. However, by shifting the official deadline to 2028, the White House appears to be signaling a willingness to give Starship the time it needs to succeed. This approach also helps prevent major disruption to the Artemis program as a whole. Rather than forcing a premature decision or restructuring, the new timeline allows NASA and its partners to proceed with greater confidence and stability. If this interpretation is correct, SpaceX stands to benefit significantly. The company would gain additional time to refine critical systems and address unresolved technical challenges. Current projections suggest that 2026 will be the deadline for Starship version 3 to demonstrate its core capabilities. The complex orbital refueling system, which is essential for lunar missions, is not expected to begin construction until 
until the middle of next year. Given these realities, launching an uncrewed Starship HLS to the moon too early would carry substantial risk. From this perspective, the revised schedule looks less like a delay and more like a practical reset. It allows for deeper testing, tighter integration, and stronger validation, all of which improve the odds of success. Even so, the timeline remains flexible. Many believe SpaceX could still push harder with an uncrewed Starship HLS landing in early 2027, followed by a crewed landing by mid-year. That gap would be sufficient to review data, resolve issues, and build confidence ahead of human flight. Achieving a crewed lander sooner would also carry strategic benefits, giving the US and SpaceX time to lock in gains and prepare for what comes next. Even more ambitious than the landing itself is the next objective outlined by the White House, building a moon base. The executive order calls for the US to establish the initial elements of a permanent lunar outpost by 2030, ensuring a sustained presence in space and supporting future missions to Mars. That is an extraordinary aggressive goal, requiring a functional base to take shape just two years after the first crewed landing. This timeline likely overlaps with the final preparation phase of China's own crewed lunar mission. As a result, the lunar base is not only a scientific or technological milestone, but a strategic signal of long-term commitment and capability at a critical moment. The key question is how NASA could realistically build a moon base on such a tight timeline. Using traditional methods, the task would be overwhelming. Modules would need to be built on Earth, launched separately, landed individually, and assembled on the lunar surface, requiring countless missions and years of coordination. Adding systems to mine and process lunar resources would only increase complexity. Under those conditions, a 2030 deadline would seem unattainable. That equation changes if Starship is used in a more unconventional way. One concept gaining attention is converting a Starship itself into a lunar base. In this scenario, a Starship would be fully outfitted on Earth with expanded life support, habitation, and research systems, then launched to the moon as a normal mission. Once there, it would be repurposed into a stationary base, either by using cushioning systems to transition it into a horizontal position or by executing a controlled horizontal landing. Both approaches offer a far faster path to a large pressurized habitat than traditional modular construction. Even if Starship is not used directly as a base, its unmatched payload capacity makes it ideal for delivering massive modules, heavy equipment, and supplies to the lunar surface on an accelerated schedule. Taken together, these goals make the message unmistakable. The White House executive order firmly positions SpaceX as the center of America's lunar strategy, while repeated references to Mars make clear that the moon is a proving ground, not a final destination. Mars is the next major objective for both NASA and the US, and it remains the driving ambition behind SpaceX's Starship program. More than any other system, Starship represents NASA's strongest path to sending humans to Mars, sustaining long-term operations, and eventually establishing a permanent presence. This urgency is underscored by China's plans to return Mars samples between 2028 and 2030. With so much at stake, the conversation is just beginning. What are your thoughts on the government's new lunar plan? Let me know your perspective, and be sure to like and subscribe to follow SpaceX's journey ahead. Of course, to take full advantage of these opportunities, SpaceX will need to accelerate its progress significantly. The immediate focus is Flight 12, which is currently undergoing intense preparation. Based on recent updates, SpaceX is moving forward with preparations for S-39, beginning with the complete completion of its associated test tank. The schedule for road closures related to test tank transport has now been announced, running from 11.59 a.m. on December 18th to 4 a.m. on December 19th. The published route runs from Massey to the production site, clearly indicating that this operation involves test tank 39.1, which was recently removed from its test stand. At the same time, SpaceX conducted the 12th test of test tank 17 inside the test cage on the evening of the 18th. These coordinated activities are designed to clear space and prepare the Massey site for S-39 to arrive for cryogenic testing in the near future. Progress on B-19 is also accelerating. On the afternoon of the 18th, the forward section, known as FX-3, was delivered to Megabay. This section features the updated hot staging area as well as the opening for grid fin installation. With the lifting jig already in place, stacking with the rest of B-19 is expected to begin soon. There's likely still one major section missing, probably the main methane tank.
Once that segment arrives and is stacked, B19 will be structurally complete. If this happens before the 24th of this month, it would mark the fastest completion of a Super Heavy booster to date, surpassing all previous Starship and Super Heavy prototypes. These developments demonstrate SpaceX's determination to maintain momentum and push toward Flight 12 despite the issues encountered with B18. The company appears committed to staying on schedule and moving forward aggressively. Finally, for today's report, we have an update from Europe. On December 17th, Ariane Space successfully launched Ariane 6 from French Guiana, carrying two Galileo navigation satellites into orbit. The mission, Galileo Launch 14, expands Europe's satellite navigation constellation, which now includes 26 active spacecraft and serves as Europe's alternative to the US GPS system. These satellites will deploy shortly after launch, complete initial checkouts, and gradually move into their final orbits more than 23,000 kilometers above Earth. With Ariane 6 now operational, Europe can once again launch Galileo missions independently after years of relying on SpaceX following the retirement of Ariane 5 and the loss of Soyuz access. This was Ariane 6's fifth flight and its fourth success in the past year, a meaningful step forward after a long and difficult development. While the milestone restores European autonomy in space, increasing launch cadence and lowering costs will be essential if Ariane 6 is to compete in an industry still dominated by SpaceX. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.